Hi everybody. Uh, my name is Rashmi. I'm from Design Hill, and I welcome you all to WTF20, which is the world's biggest digital conference for artists. Brought to you by Print Shop by Design Hill, which is one of the fastest growing creative print-on-demand marketplace. So, uh, just a brief um, about WTF. It's a three-day digital conference starting from today. We have a series of events for you guys, ranging from workshops to webinars to AMAs and many more. Um, today we have. Have Jimbo with us. Uh, he is the very first speaker for WTF20. He is a visual designer and a letterer from Barcelona. He started graphic design six years ago, and that brought him uh, to work with clients from around the world. So today um, he is going to talk about how to create beautiful posters using Procreate. So Jimbo, thank you so much for joining us. It's amazing thank to have. Man. It's a pleasure having you with us, and uh, we really, really appreciate that. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you for so much for having me. I'm super excited. Yeah. So um, everybody, before we begin with the session, if you have any questions, please put your questions in the questions tab. You can see that on the right hand side of uh, your screen, and we'll pick it up from there. Um, you will also receive some polls in between the sessions, so it would be great if you can answer that as well. So before we start the session, I would like to thank you, uh, thank our associating partners, Illustration Artist Club, Graphic Designers Club, Pattern Designers Club, Typography Designers Club, Logo Designers Club, and our online learning partner, Milan Art Institute from Georgia, USA. Let's look at what Print Shop by Design Hill and WTF is all about. WTF 20 and we have a lot of exciting sessions coming uh, for you guys so just in case you have not registered yet for the upcoming session we will also drop the registration link in the chat section at the end of the session so stay tuned uh, all right then before um, we uh, uh, let's uh, over to you now Jumbo let's start the session all right well it's on me now huh <laughs> All right. Well, yes, thank, thank you. Thank you guys for having me. Um, this is exciting. Uh, I love it because, you know, I've been, well, we all been locked down for a while. So that's like the great opportunity, you know, to actually like have some contact with the outside world. Um, right now, well, as you, as she perfectly told you, I'm from Barcelona. I'm cur currently living in Croatia, but um, yeah, uh, I came uh, a couple a couple months ago, three, I went to Barcelona uh, just to, to visit my family and just, you know, to, to live there for a while. And, you know, what this, when this corona happened, I had to, I had to move to my parents' place up north in, in, in Spain. 
And basically, I am here, you know, in my parents' room. This is my old room, so don't mind all the books here. Well, I have some Goku right there. It's going to give me strength. Um, yeah, and that's that's pretty much it. I'm going to, well, as um, as she told you as well, I'm going to be teaching some um, lettering, just basically how to create a, a little poster in Procreate. Uh, and yeah, that's it. I uh, hope you guys have uh, Procreate. You can... You can as well follow me along with like some apps like Photoshop or Affinity Designer, whatever. It's gonna be it's gonna be great with whatever you're using. Uh, so yeah, I'm just gonna jump and and go straight to to share the screen, so we can start this little session. We won't have a lot of time, so uh, okay. Enable screen sharing. <clears throat> All right. Well. Hopefully you can see me. Uh, right now, I cannot see you guys at all. So, so hopefully you can see the screen, right? Say say yes in the chat so I know. Great, Shivani, thank you so much. You can see my screen. <laughs> Perfect. All right. So. Um, yeah, Rashmi, if you have anything, uh, if something is not working, please uh, enable your microphone and just like tell me anything, okay? Because I'm just gonna be, I'm completely by myself right here. All right. Yeah, I'm there. Yeah. Great, perfect, perfect. If, yeah, like every five minutes, please just say something just in case something happens because I'm not gonna know, definitely. right? <laughs> yeah, definitely. I'm here. Yeah. Great, thank you so much. All right, so. Um, Okay, so you know we're gonna do this little this little poster, and uh, I would like to I would like to start uh, by by telling you you know a bit uh, what you should do in the beginning and the little steps you should be using all the time. Um, you know, you, oh, it's it's always better to start with a with a little sketch. Um, in this in this part, you know, we just wanna know a little bit about the concept and. Um, I wouldn't like for you guys to go like really into detail right now because it's not really important. So at this at this spot, we just wanna you know have a bit of um, you know the feeling of the piece and what you're gonna say, what you're gonna talk about, you know, find some concepts or you know whatever you wanna you know say to people. So basically, uh, here I started with a with a real rough sketch. Um, you can you can you know do this with any kind of pencil. I'm using one of my uh, sketching pencils, um, and yeah, basically basically that's gonna be it. Okay, just like try to do something like really fast. Don't spend so much time in here. Okay, so as you see, we're gonna be learning how to do this piece. So basically, we're gonna go from the the little sketch I just shown you. Sorry, just gonna drink a bit. Mm to a finalized, finalized piece like this one. All right, so let's go to the second step. Um, okay, so a lot of you, I suppose, they got, you're gonna sketch uh, using a pencil in, the, in, the, in a real notebook. Um, I encourage you to do it a lot because you know, that's gonna give you like a nice feeling, you know, like going back to like stepping off from digital is always great. Um, you just like snap a picture and put it in your Procreate. As you can see, we're just gonna have our sketch in here, the first layer. Um, and basically, what we did here is just to set up a bit of a guideline. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna spend so much time in here. Sorry, I just want to check something for a second. All right. So yeah, sorry if I if I go through the the thing again. Okay. So basically, um, just you know, make some guides with uh with your pencil or with whatever tool you you, you want to use uh for this for example we use just like two lines for the three words and then little little squares that is that are going to help us you know determine the space for the for this uh for the your word all right so right after that i wanted to to tell you how do i actually give some like nice proportions and 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 you know like you really have to control the weights in 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 each word so basically what i do here is to to do these little these little boxes so just um 
just I'm gonna give you like all these layers so you see what I'm talking about. Here we have the, the previous layers I was I was showing you before. And then here we're just gonna come up with these boxes. Um, some of you might ask why are you doing these boxes? So for instance, um, this box, for example, up is gonna give us a bit of a perspective of you know what kind of um, fix and things we wanna be using. We wanna balance every thick stroke. Um, so for example, let's let's do a fast letter so we're gonna know. Here we have the N, for example, right? So basically your N should stick into these boxes. And then when you go up, you go down as well. It should, it should be something like that. As you see, this and that are gonna be well balanced. And that's what, you know, all this is all about. Okay, so for the word down, basically, so yeah, I didn't, I, if I skip some steps, please uh, uh, say it in the in the box and, and Rajmi can say it to me. As I told you, I cannot see you guys right now. So I really, I'm like in my own thing here. Um, in the in the boxes down, basically we're gonna do some, um, so we are using the, the script up and down um, we're gonna use um, sans serif or serif. We have to determine this after, but basically I just, um, just by following the sketch, I wanted to, you know, to do something like that. I wanted to do some, some more like monoline kind of like, but you see like all these boxes basically are gonna give us a really nice guide, you know, to see what we're doing. Actually, these boxes, you could also place them in the, not just in the vertical, uh, but you can also place them horizontally. Like you could, you know, place them down here. So you see like what, it's happening in the whole letter, basically. Okay, let's let's go to the next one. All right, we have like ten hours here to go through, so we're gonna have to like go really fast. Okay, for this one, I wanted to show you some technique that I use all the time. So basically, um, what's happening here? I already have. Um, I'm putting the sketch that I'm gonna do after. But um, as you can see now, if we put these boxes a little bit down, the opacity down, as you can see here when is uh, when i'm trying to do a script uh instead of you know like so i love calligraphy uh, but i never do calligraphy as an end up result so basically i'm gonna do some calligraphy to later on convert it into lettering right so i'm gonna use one of my brushes from the kickoff if you if you guys have it or if not you can go through you know you like procreate natively has a lot of um brushes that actually imitate some kind of a calligraphy pens, brush pens, etc. So basically what we're gonna do here is just to, you know, come up with a script. If you know calligraphy, do this. If you don't, you can just go directly into into pencil and, and, and just paint the word. But if you know if you know calligraphy, this is gonna help us so much because it's gonna give us a more natural feeling to the whole piece. So basically, um, okay, wait, let's let's sell it the same color. So basically I'm just gonna give here like a bit of a guide so you see what you're gonna be doing. You don't have to be exactly like, you don't have to be perfect in this step, but as you can see, you can do a bit of a calligraphy. So you know a bit of the, you know, you're gonna get a bit of this nice flow that calligraphy has. As I told you, I'm not a super expert, so I'm not, I'm, I'm completely, you know, focused on lettering. And for sure, like you guys gonna do it better than me. Um, but basically, yeah, just like bring a couple strokes, you know. If you wanna do it faster, you can you can as well do it faster. It it would all depends on on like the the you know the feeling you wanna give to the piece. But if you wanna do it faster, you can as well do it faster. All right. So this is gonna be it for the for this little trick. And then when you have the, you know, the, the script done with calligraphy here, for example, I have this one that I did before. Uh, basically what you can do is to go here and basically paint on top of it. So what I mean by that is you see, uh, we just put the, this layer, the calligraphy we did before, we just put it a bit of, uh, we just bring the opacity a little bit down and then we go over with some, uh, 
let's go over with a pencil once again and basically what you have to do here is just like you know to to make this word a little sorry for that i have to wait i'm gonna erase this layer just for the sake of showing you so basically just go over with it with pencil you know let's say that you know you would like to instead of doing this thick i think you, you want to do it more like you want to do it a bit thicker so basically you just can like you know play around with it feel free this is just you know the calligraphy down is just giving you a little bit of advice a little bit of, of guidelines but you don't have to follow it exactly the same so just like you know feel free and 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 you know come up with your own with your own style all right so yeah again we don't have time to you know to to finish the whole sketch but this is a bit what I would like you guys to do right now. Okay, just go go over and just like you know paint it a little bit. All right, Rajmi, everything okay there? Is everything fine? Yes, everything is fine. We just have few questions though, which um, you know I would want uh, you to sort of pick after five minutes or so, just in case. Like, yeah. as in, you feel like you know answering few questions. Yeah, 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 definitely. So, oh, uh, okay. So Neha, uh, one of the attendee is asking, can we outline text and then can fill colors on it? Uh, yeah, definitely. So you, you would like to outline text and then you can throw the colors in it. Yes, you can, definitely. Okay, okay, cool. <laughs> uh, okay, and uh, then one of the questions that we have also received from these people who have registered is that, you know, uh, what is the, how to sort of decide the best color combination when it comes to creating a beautiful posters? So how do you go okay. about that? Okay, so you can, do a, you can do actually a lot of things when it comes to colors. Um, one of the things we do in the studio a lot is to to go out in the street and try to take as many pictures as you want. Obviously, we cannot do that now, but um, luckily for us, we still have some pictures. You know, like from from the past, we went to you know shopping malls and to to the streets. Um, basically, like in Barcelona, we took a lot of pictures from packagings or you know even nature. And you basically can just like process that into Procreate and just like pick different colors um and it really depends you you will always need a bit of color theory but but this is something that you can actually solve pretty fast um if you want you can also head to my instagram um i share some of my tips for the for the for coloring and and yeah basically that's it well i i just released a product also in in the that's called the kick of lettering toolbox that allows you to to learn how to do palettes so you basically like just pick one color bring it and then from that color do three more colors you know to to start building up palettes but um yeah there's a bunch of ways and um yeah just you know if you have some doubts just like go to my instagram hit me up and i'm gonna happily reply you all Great. Uh, then in the questions tab, uh, Voni Lim is asking, what canvas size do you usually work on for posters? Great. So yeah, that's a common that's a common question, right? Because um, there can be a lot of things. Um, one thing would be like if you're doing some client work, that might change because you know maybe the client wants something bigger, something that can be printed in a, in actual a poster, like like today, for example. Um, so sometimes you know i would tell you that the bigger the better in this case because you know maybe you you're just doing a, a piece for instagram but um you would like to to print it later on you can sell it as a print you know just right now i'm talking about some like personal projects for example um so yeah the bigger the better the only problem is always that you know for example my my the one i use all the time is 40 centimeters times 50 centimeters that's like a, a ratio four or five it's perfect for instagram and it's also also it's perfect to actually print it out but uh if you really 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 don't want to print it out and you just like i want to do you know some time-lapse video or i want a piece and i want a lot of effects and i want a lot of layers and i'm just uh, trying out try you know something like you know for instagram for example you can try something like 20 25 centimeters 400 dpi it will allow you to do 50 layers and you can play around with it 
Awesome. Uh, okay, we have a lot of questions coming up now. Okay, Excellent. looking at the questions, uh, is there any other uh, tool than Procreate uh, to do typography or lettering work, which is asked by Shivani Sharma? Yeah, definitely. Um, before Procreate, I was using Photoshop. Um, that is actually a great tool, but the only problem is that I had some I had some advantages when I was a student, and now like you know Adobe products are a bit more expensive. Um, if you don't have the cash for that, that can happen a lot. Uh, you can um, as well mm, jump on Affinity Designer. That's like a really good alternative, and it's a perfect actually a perfect software to actually. For you to use why so affinity designer is uh, for the ipad and it's as well for the mac or for the i think it's for windows i'm not sure maybe it's not but anyways uh, if you have a laptop a mac uh, it's also great because affinity designer what does is that it has like two ways of work right one is uh, completely uh, pixels like procreate you can um, you can put uh, textures and, and and this kind of brushes made out of like natural you know real life you know things but then you also have the the vector persona that you can actually do both in the same program so like i think affinity designer is the best resource apart from procreate and it's just 50 dollars, and it's lifetime which is really hard to to find these days actually Okay, moving ahead to the next question. Uh, we have a lot of coming up. Uh, Freja is asking, which are the best brushes to use on Procreate for calligraphy? Okay, um, there is a, a bunch of uh, calligraphy brushes. Um, I don't have a, a big amount because um, I do my own brushes. I actually sell my own brushes. Um, and I mean, I don't want to advertise just my products, but if you go into markets such as Design Cuts, you 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 will find a lot of um, calligraphy brushes. There's uh, like other designers that actually do a great job. Um, yeah, and and that's it. Just just go over there and try to see what's what's trendy, um, and also like you know see all the images depending on what you want to do. Like if you want to do some. You know just brush calligraphy or you want to do some um, nib calligraphy yeah just just go to to design cuts and just you know check it out and there's a bunch of nice things out there okay uh then Car uh, carlos and five other people are asking um where do you find inspiration for your project they might have seen you on instagram and yeah they want to know how do you find your inspiration? <laughs> okay um well uh first of all online that's what everyone is doing nowadays i guess uh the other big inspiration is books um i've been collecting a few books from the past um there are like great references if you want if you want to ask me on instagram i can i can you know tell you like a bunch of lists um yeah um books from the 70s 80s you know retro packaging there's a there's a bunch of inspiration out there it's just like you know sitting in a corner sometimes um then you know you can you can follow pages like um yeah like these guys you know like you can go to typography designers club and you know they have a lot of uh, sharings you can go to to you know places such as lettering daily that's just gonna you know like give you uh, a daily inspiration about calligraphy and lettering and stuff like that so basically books uh, online inspiration and platforms and and that's that's pretty much it actually yeah okay and i see a lot of people are asking uh, in the mm -hmm. questions tab which is about i don't do calligraphy so mm -hmm. should i go with the basics first or how should i start that's a question for those any tips for those who are beginners into this field all right so um um when it comes to to my case um i, I started so I'm, I'm a former graphic designer so that helped me a lot to actually know the basics of typography. So in one hand, we have the typography skills that you should learn if you want to do lettering. You know, it's going to tell you all these kind of like kind of letters, a bit of the history, what happened, what's about to happen. And then um, from that, you can go directly to lettering. We, you don't have to have the middle step for calligraphy. But if you know the, the basic rules of calligraphy, those are going to help you extremely a lot 
to actually do nice lettering because basically you just have to follow the rules. You don't have to be a calligraphy expert or your hand doesn't have to produce the, the best calligraphy. But if you know just the theory, you know, like what's thick and thins, some angles, some tools you might use, that's going to help you a lot uh, if you want to learn lettering. But it's not mandatory and you can skip that thing. There's a bunch of uh, lettering artists that never did calligraphy in their lives, but they know about calligraphy because, you know, they got interested in it. And and that helped them, but yeah, you don't have to to be a master of calligraphy to actually do lettering. Awesome. So we have taken already a lot of questions now. So shall we? Uh, so anyone else, if you have more questions, please put it in the questions tab, and we'll pick it up from there. Do not put it in the chat section because you know the questions get lost between the conversation, so it's hard to find your questions there. So uh, put your questions in the questions tab and we'll get back to the workshop. And um, after five minutes or so, so, we will sort of, you know, uh, take you through what next we have coming up series of events. So that would be a sort of, um, that I'll do after five minutes, Jimbo, uh, just to, uh, you know, let you know. Um, but uh, as of now, we can begin with the workshop. And um, once we are done with that, then we can uh, go ahead taking questions again. All right, let's get back to it. Then. Yeah, I'll take it from here. Then. All right, so um, here. Now that we, you know, okay, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go back for a second so we we remember what we were doing. So here we were uh, just basing. We have the the calligraphy, and then we basically went over with a pencil, and you know, just like refining refining the word as you remember. Etc. Okay. Um, also, as I said in the, in other questions, just try to find some inspiration, some uh, other styles of lettering. You can do a bunch of things that actually don't follow your calligraphy. So, for instance, you know you can you can like do other other kinds of of, um, of lettering for uh, of uh, yeah lettering and calligraphy. For example, you could do let's say some some other style. Let's you know let's you can exaggerate the the those um you see so basically you have absolute freedom you don't have to follow your calligraphy or even if you don't know how to do calligraphy you don't have to follow anything just like uh take up some references and like try to you know copy reinterpret other people's work okay just make sure that this and that have the same kind of weight so basically following the you know following those and that the thin lines are also the same, okay? So let's go and and I'm gonna show you here. So basically we have the calligraphy done, yeah? What we have to do here is to ink the piece, yeah? Um, you could even refine the sketch uh, with a, you know, a little bit better, a little bit cleaner. If you want, you can spend more time. But for the sake of the exercise, I just went uh, to ink it directly. So basically, now this is your sketch that you just did. And basically, we're going to go over it with some inkers. What an inker is. Okay. So I'm just going to, you know, like do it really fast so you guys see the difference. Um, this is one of my pencils. And then, well, I'm going to, I'm going to leave it so you see the difference. And then, for example, we've got I don't know, one of these uh, rough and raw. Um, this is also one of my uh, brush bags. Um, I included a lot of uh, different, you know, textures and, and ripples. And so, for example, the, the ripple is one of the my favorite inkers. So basically what this does is, you see, it's basically filling up. As you can see, this imitates better some kind of a broken nib or a, a little like um, ball pen or some kind of a basically a pen right a micron or something like that so basically um you can also do this with uh, just like procreate tools you can go to airbrushing and then the, get the, the hairbrush and basically you can also do like ink it in a more clean way but you know since i kind of like got up this style of roughness that i always use for my pieces i always go ahead and like use my inkers so basically what we're gonna do here is to put the opacity down of the sketch and then do a new layer 
this one I did it a bit before and basically just uh, give me a second so basically just go over and ink the piece I'm just gonna show you guys like really fast a little bit how do I ink but this is totally again up to you and again here you have a great opportunity to refine the piece once again so basically you refined it before with a sketch and now you're gonna refine it once again with the inker okay so basically go ahead with your inker refine it a little bit it, it can take you like some time you can step back but um okay this is not perfect at all all right but i just it's gonna help us as an example so basically now here you can go up here get the the color and just basically go inside and leave it inside so basically that that was one of your questions i think so basically just like try to fill up everything you've done and here you are done with the piece okay here i didn't explain you because we really don't have time but for example in this example i did basically um i started with a with a with a with a sun serif typography but i added a bit of serifs so it's a bit more interesting so for example like i'm going to show you how to do this typography like really fast basically follow those squares i was talking about earlier and um, just like go over with them and then you can as well do that so basically here we are keeping the same weight in all the strokes and then for example if that was a, a normal uh, sans serif i would just go and like you see do again something that doesn't change the weight of the word of the letter since i wanted to add a bit more i'm gonna skip the last step you can as well paint it and then here you can add some some serifs there is a bunch of serifs that you can learn from and again if you are investigating some books or some like some other designers work you're gonna see that there's plenty of them and you can you know use them and try to to get better at them and you know once you this is like everything right when once you do something you just memorize them and you have um muscle memory so that's gonna be easy for you all right so we have this we're gonna have like seven minutes more i think until the questions come uh basically here i'm not explaining a lot how to do color palettes because here i just um i went like you know really fast and i was just trying to figure it out you know as i was doing the piece um sometimes you know i have you see sometimes these are all my palettes the ones i use um but in this case i'm not going to tell you a lot how to make palettes um so basically this is how it looks after we ink the whole piece as you see there is a bit of roughness but it still like looks really clean and that's what we wanted to get basically now we have this now i'm going to show you like really fast how to do a 3d effect to the letters so basically what you have to do here is okay so i'm going to show you in find and fire okay because i have it in the same layer by now so basically what you have to do for the for getting some 3d you have to just you know choose the light source or where you want your your word to project its volume to right so for example you could uh, you could uh put it up there you can bring it down here down there okay you have 360 degrees so you can do whatever you want basically what are we gonna do here as i said is duplicate the layer bring some like darker color drag it down here okay now put this layer below the light one and then with the selection tool grab it and just move it around all right um for this exercise we did something like this but you can as well you know do it like that or however you want i'm gonna keep it like this once you have that now you have to connect the, the two layers together how do we do that it's like really easy there's a bunch of techniques and there's a bunch of designers that have a lot of techniques and you're probably going to see differently and it doesn't have to be less correct so just follow 
any advice that you know someone can give you. But for example, what we're gonna do here is to connect one ending to the other ending, right? So basically, just bring it down here, and then okay. So basically, again, here one ending with the other ending. Here is the same, and then paint to the inside. So basically, that's like. It might take you less time or more, but you see, now we have the piece connected. And now you basically repeat the step in all the corners and you're gonna get your 3D done. Okay. Okay, that's that's look pretty perfect now, the 3D piece of work. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, and we have, we I see I see that there are a lot of questions that you know you guys are putting in. So um, thank you so much for that. It's really nice to see you guys participating and see you. And uh, I hope I am I'm, I'm sure that this is a uh, the, this whole session is gonna uh, going amazing. Um, Jimbo, uh, can I take them quickly through what we have coming up next? Yes, definitely. Go ahead. Okay. Great, great. So guys, as I said before the start of the session, that there are a lot of, uh, you know, upcoming, uh, it, it's a day one of WTF 20. And it, there, there are a series of sessions like AMA and panel discussions coming up. So I'll quickly uh, take you through what we have in uh, store for you. So let's check that out. I've always been creative and always been an artist. As a young girl, I used to paint rocks and I used to sell them for a quarter on the street. <laughs> and I just fell in love with it. It just grew into a passion of mine. I started looking on the web and I came across Design Hill and they had a design contest to design a logo and I entered it and, and I won. And I was like, oh, this is really great. I can pick and choose what type of logos or design projects I want to work on. And it allows me to be creative, keep my hands, you know, with my tools and, and working. So it's kind of nice. It's really easy to use. You can scroll through the projects and there's sections that you could go by. It's really easy. There is a few clients who have come back to use the one-on-one -on -one projects. There's one client in particular, she owns a vintage shop and I designed her logo and she came back. She needed a design for a flyer and she really liked the illustrations that I did for her. So she came back a couple of times with projects. I would recommend it, especially um, if you're a designer that's starting out and you wanna learn from other designers, seasoned designers, it's a place to keep in the game and keep using your tools. It makes me feel great and it kind of confirms that I should be doing this. And I love to see logos that I've designed out and proud of that. And I think that the clients are so happy that their logo represents what they do and you know makes them look good. It's a collaboration, it's good for me and it's definitely good for them. Looking to bring your branding out of the 80s? Head to the world's number one creative marketplace, Design Hill. When I wanted to grow my parents' restaurant business, I knew we needed a better logo than the one my uncle Sonny drew back in the 1980s. That's why I went to Design Hill and got an incredible logo and brand identity that met all my needs within my small budget. The process was easy. I just went to Design Hill's marketplace to choose from one of their incredible professional designers. Find one you like based on their style. Oh, this one looks interesting. Check the ratings and reviews to see how other people like their work. Oh, seems like he's worked at restaurants before. Then add some information about your business. Do you have a slogan? Where's the logo gonna appear? What colors do you need? Then your designer will get to work delivering you an incredible logo. You can even find an expert to design any kind of graphic design, from packaging, to menus, to t-shirts, to business cards. I got everything. And now with the help of Design Hill, I have everything I need to take my business to the next level and leave the 80s where they belong. It's real. 
Mom and dad are so proud. Maybe we can open up a second location, or a third, or a fourth, or let's just go global. Let the world know it's real and build your brand with Design Hill. session which is coming up is an AMA session so stay tuned for that as well we'll drop the link in the chat section um, so that you guys can join that as well so now let's quickly Jimbo shall we take a few more questions yeah because we, I see a lot of questions out there we can do that yes yeah so um, so what lettering books do you think are must-haves okay uh, maybe I can do a list on that like what about what about tomorrow on Instagram? If you if you come, just I'm I'm just gonna like post my favorites. But on top of my head right now, you should totally get books such as I'm just gonna say the the, the authors. I'm not sure about the specific name, but uh, you should get totally um, books from house industries. They like, they are amazing um you should totally jump on getting some books from louise philly who's um um i think she's like from new york and also uh she's got some italian roots and you you've got you're gonna find like some nice lettering packaging like rooted in italy so that's perfect you can also get some uh, the book uh, i think um jessica hish has got a great book that i have that i'm referencing all the time um, and you might as well get the, um, I'm going to say Martina Floor. Martina Floor has got like a super great book. Um, yeah, I mean, I could tell you a really bunch of them. You can also get uh, to the editorial Tashin and they have great books as well there. So you can, you can get onto that. Um, yeah, uh, I was just telling you that you can also get my kickoff lettering toolbox. Uh, if you want to learn lettering and calligraphy, that's a great tool for Procreate. So you can just, you know, also get that. But yeah, tomorrow, definitely go to my Instagram. Tomorrow I'm going to do a list. Uh, I'm just going to like, you know, go over and write it so I don't forget. And, and that's it. But Jimbo, oh. I remember that there were there were a lot of people who wanted to know the difference between lettering and typography. If you can explain that, yes, definitely. So basically, if we can go like really fast, um, basically you have to learn the differences in between typography, calligraphy, and then lettering. Um, typography, basically. Um, so basically, you can do a typography or a font. You can do that from a lettering, right? So for example, um, I would say that typography are those letters that are actually programmed for you to have in uh, applications such as, you know, if you want to write something in Microsoft Word or something like that, or if you want to like uh, design a website, those are typographies. Um, basically, there are systems that work better. You can choose from like different kinds of typography depending on your needs. And basically those are, you know, like they are set just for you to write. Then lettering, uh, it's basically the design of letters, but just for a, for a single purpose. So for example, uh, if you wanna do a cover for a book with uh, an illustration and lettering, you're just gonna you know, design those letters just for a purpose. That in this case, it's um, a book cover or a poster or something like that. But you won't design the whole alphabet, such as in a typography. So that that's more or less like, I'm not really good explaining this kind of things, but hopefully you understood. Okay. So Jimbo, one thing, one question that we have received is that which tool, um, what is the tool and process that changed the game for you into this field and in this industry, if you want to talk okay. about it? I know that one because there's just one, one reply to that. Um, okay, I just lost you guys for a second. Okay, um, I'm here again, right? Yeah. 
Um, so the tool that changed my career actually is Procreate and the iPad Pro. That, that's, that's been the tool that, that changed the whole game. Um, I used to design in Photoshop before and in Illustrator from Adobe. And, and now since I have Procreate, I go faster, I sketch faster. Um, and I, you know, I have time to, you know, put some textures of mine. I have time to, to color everything and ba basically to like speed up the whole process. So yeah, that's, that's, uh, if I have to say one, I'm going to say procreate hundred percent. Okay. Okay. And, uh, Jimbo, what difference procreate offers than, uh, probably Photoshop or Adobe suits, what difference does it offer? Okay. Um, it's, it's basically. So, so, you know, Photoshop wasn't invented for graphic tablets, right? Photoshop for me was just invented to use with the mouse or as well with the tablet, obviously it's been like, people have been using this for long, for like, for long years, but, um, Procreate has been implemented hundred percent perfectly for tablet use. So for iPad and as you know, Apple products have a lot of like nice uh touching gestures you know so procreate has like the two two fingers to step back three to step to step um forward there is um you can access to the whole inter interface like really fast you don't need a keyboard um it's uh, basically it's photoshop it's it's more complicated but it it it, it shouldn't be that complicated to use photoshop but it, instead procreate if you start from scratch, you can learn much faster because like the, the UX design has been thought right like, really through. And, um, and yeah, that's, that's basically it. You know, you can do everything, you know, with your fingers, like really fast and like, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's great. Awesome. Awesome. And Jimbo, you also talked about, uh, you know, you use your own brushes when it comes to lettering and typography. So yeah. one of the question I remember uh, uh, in the questions tab was how do you create your own brushes? Okay. That, that's a good one. Um, there is a bunch of ways that you create, you can create your own um, brushes. Um, in the studio, we've been thinking about doing a course in the future because that's something everyone is asking all the time. Um, basically our brushes are made out of real life textures, all of them. So basically what I'm doing a lot is to, you know, let's say that I want to do a couple pencils. Um, I buy the real pencils and I experiment with them. I see what feeling the, the, the pencils are giving you, or what kind of paper you can use, all that. And when I, when I place it together, I sample everything from real life and then I incorporate it in my brushes. So for example, in the last pack, I've been uh, sampling the whole Barcelona. So basically you can get textures from like the palm trees and from the floors and basically, you know, taking a photo of, uh, you know, of um, concrete, for example, that brush I'm using a lot, taking a photo from a real concrete texture and then making a, a pattern out of that with Photoshop or Procreate and then putting it in Procreate. So like, they, I, I have no exact um, way of doing, like not just one way, but I have a thousand ways to do brushes. And yeah, I wish I could do a course and um, yeah, hopefully I go, I'm gonna find time to it. But, but basically there, there's also like some courses in the internet. If you have Skillshare, you can go over it and, and th there's people actually teaching that and a lot of my friends in in, um, in the lettering world are actually having some tips and tricks. So there's definitely a lot of info out there. Great, awesome. Okay, so one of, one more question which I saw in the questions tab was about you know lettering composition. So the question was that, <clears throat> that is there any rule for uh, composing a letter and any tips that you would want to suggest to come up with a, a good piece of lettering? So basically you asked, you asked me if there is any rule you have to follow, right? To do yeah. a lettering or letters. Yeah. I mean, listen, uh, that's, that's like everything. There, there are rules for every, you know, anything in life there, 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 there has to be rules. Someone said the rules long time ago, for example, you know, when it comes to, to lettering and letters, basically those have been studied throughout the years and you can come up with your own rules. But first I would advise you to, to learn what rules are out there. So basically, um, you know, study, you know, why a sans serif it's called a sans serif or why a script is a script. What kinds of scripts are out there? You don't have to be specifically studying each, you know, little 
but it's interesting to know that every letter has a bunch of like different parts that when you put them together you actually make the letter that's something that you have to learn and definitely definitely there are rules that you can follow but the good thing is that when you know a bit of the rules you can as well try to trick them and move them around and that's when lettering becomes really interesting when you can twist the rules in your own way because you know the rules not because you don't want not because you don't know them but because you know them. hopefully i replied that yeah yeah and somebody uh, one of the one of the registrants might have checked your instagram account and he registered from there and he has a question for you and okay. he is asking that <clears throat> first of all he's saying i really love your textures <laughs> and what, where do you find inspiration to create your own textured brushes that's the question that's like you know <laughs> here just like turn around face the wall and that's the first brush you can do okay so basically my inspiration is all around the place and that's for sure you, like you guys are confined probably home uh just go home you know take uh, old papers uh old scribbles you did with pencil a few years ago um some dirt even like if you didn't clean for a while just take it take the dirt and do a brush you can you can um, literally, um, in, in the last brushes we've done, we even uh, sampled some salt and sugar to do some like nice texturized uh, brushes. So basically the inspiration for doing brushes is everywhere, is around you. So just go ahead and, and just try to find textures. They're everywhere. Awesome, awesome. I hope everyone you have received the answers of most of the questions that we you have, uh, you know, put it out in the questions tab. We have very, very limited time. We have just four minutes to go. And uh, we have tried to answer almost every question. So Jimbo, can you see the questions tab on the right hand side of your screen? I can see it there. Yeah, you can, right? Okay, I all can. right. Okay, let's do like some rapid fire. Um, yeah. Do you prefer work on digital or analog? Digital, 100%. But I like to start with analog, always with a pencil, just to know what I'm going to do, and then I go to, to digital, so that. Um, what else? Uh, eh. um, okay, is there any rules for the composition of the lettering? There are no rules. Um, you can start with like little, you know, simplified, boxes and and you know you can like come up with different compositions you can make some letters smaller and then do them bigger you can you know do a lot of that you can just head off to my instagram and just you know check um check like you know the compositions i'm using and you might as well check uh my friend ian barnard who's having a perfect tool for procreate and photoshop it's called the, the letter builder and you're going to have a lot of you know different boxes for you to do your own competitions okay i'm going to do another one if i have a minute um, yeah do you have a youtube channel or instagram no but i'm about to have a youtube channel i would love that um and another one if i could type out my instagram they say uh, yeah i could do that wait i'm gonna go to the gym. I'm typing it it's a bit slow because I'm doing a lot of things with this laptop, but I think that's it. Yeah, I just typed it. Okay, that's it. I think, again, if you have more questions, please come to my Instagram, come to my website, the studio, Do yeah, just reach me out, whatever. I mean, like a thousand platforms to so just come and, and say hi. And also, just one thing, um, I have uh, free brushes uh for my uh newsletter subscribers so if you can you you head to you head over to my website i'm gonna put it here shopbam.com you can go over there and just sign up to my newsletter and you can get all the samples from my brushes and and yeah that's pretty much it guys Awesome. Awesome. So I, uh, everyone, thank you so much for being here. And thank you so much again for joining us for this session. I am sure that, uh, you know, it would have helped you in some other way. We have taken a lot of questions, but because of time constraint, we can't, uh, you know, take any more. But uh, you can, as Jimbo has already shared his Instagram handle with you, you can always reach out to him day and there. And trust me, he's very, very active there. He, uh, he will answer all your questions. So, uh, 
just uh, you know dm him on instagram if you have more questions and uh, he would be happy to help you i'm sure about that uh, also as i said we have a lot of more uh, sessions coming up we will put the link in the chat section um uh, and also we have created a whatsapp group for everyone who are sort of uh, you know in, you know interested into these webinars and conferences um, so uh, if you want to join that as well and uh, be on top of the game you can join that as well so thank you so much jimbo uh, again for joining us it was pleasure having you yeah no problem so just a word of thank to you jimbo for taking out time for this thank session thank you guys it's and been great for uh, hosting an amazing session and for answering all the questions um very patiently and we did answer a lot of questions so thank you so much once again for doing that for taking out your time and coming on board uh, thank you so much everyone um, uh, who are live with us right now and we hope to see you in the next session which is coming up next in 15 minutes so stay tuned do that guys and and see you soon actually Yeah thank you so much everybody thank you so much for joining